Okay, I'm Emily Jubinville. I'm the volunteer coordinator for the Edible Garden Project. And I'm Joe White, and I'm uh, one of the farmers, and Gail's the other farmer here. So what, what is the mission here? Okay, I'll Grow food for the North Shore. In walking distance. Hopefully everybody in walking distance will come by and buy their veggies. We'll be having a farm gate sale. Um, Just out of the little doors of the shed. Yeah, and I think it's also a really exciting project because it's a bit of a pilot um, for building a different kind of model for urban agriculture. So as a non-profit, we're running this farm as a social enterprise. So any profit that we make is getting reinvested into the work that we do, which is essentially reinvested into the community. And hopefully we'll be able to continue to create more green jobs, grow fresh local organic produce, um, and get the community as involved in the process as possible. Which you can see they are. Yay. They're loving it. Everybody <laughs> wants to get their hands dirty. One of, the, one of the comments that we say between gardeners is, may you always have dirt under your nails. <laughs> I do. <laughs> uh, what else do we want to talk about? Um, so we've already started planting. We've started some early crops. We've started some parsley, which unfortunately the dogs ran over. Oh. So they broke down our bed, but we'll do that again. And then we've got some mizuna and some kamatsuma. Komatsuma. That are the komatsuma is supposed to be ready in 21 days. We'll Ooh. See. That's why we picked it out of the catalog. So, is any, that like that Asian green? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, cool. it is. Um, and Gail and I have converted our houses into greenhouses. We've got startlings. Start starting. Start. Seedlings. Seedlings. <laughs> seedlings everywhere. I actually don't have a bedroom anymore. It's a seedling station. <laughs> really? That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what are we going to be growing this year? For the rest of the summer. We're growing, we're putting in peas right now and sweet peas. We've got, um, Gail, help me out. Tomatoes? We have tomatoes and cukes and basil in the greenhouse. And we have beans and we have lots of greens. Lots of lettuces. lettuces. Potatoes, radishes. Arugula. Arugula. We'll try some delicata squash. Ooh. You don't need to peel those. So, those so when can people start buying stuff here? Maybe? Approximately? In a perfect world, a month. All Hopefully right. by, by Earth Day we might have something. Microgreens? We could have pea tips yes, for sale. And if, if all goes well with the Kamutsoma, we might actually have this this high on vegetable. Yay! <laughs> Maybe that's something. Uh, some radish greens, but not that they would want to eat those. <laughs> you never know. Um, what else are we growing? We're doing a lot of. Also, we're doing flowers that are beneficial insect attractors. No, how do you say that? Uh, Pollinators. Yeah. Beneficial. Pollination. I don't know. Yeah. So the flowers, like for instance, we're, attract, we're, we're planting some nasturtiums, and the nasturtiums attract the white fly away from the lettuce. This is the, the hope, the goal. And then you just wash them off the nasturtiums because they, they are really attractive. And I've heard they also attract um, aphids off of brassicas. Very nice. Nasturtiums. Delicious. And you can pickle the seeds at the end of the season, and they're like capers. Lovely. And you can eat the flowers and you can eat the leaves. They're like a hot peppery. It's quite yeah, amazing. It's good. You're going to get run over by a wheelbarrow. <laughs> yeah, so we're hoping this model can be used by other communities um, or even other places around the North Shore, North Shore to um, build a local food system that actually has some like weight behind it. And yeah. isn't reliant just on people growing food in their own backyards. That's part of it, but also having a little bit more growing space. Taking um, underutilized uh, public land and putting it to use that we hope will give a lot back to the community. And inspire all the mm -hmm. community garden, all the residential homes gardens to, for them to plant a few uh, vegetables for the ones that aren't already doing it. Get them at least, I've even got my mom who's 81 getting really excited about growing tomatoes on her balcony. She's 15 floors up. The pigeons decided to lay eggs there. Oh. I'm like, what pigeon goes 15 floors up? 
to lay eggs in my mom's garden. Yeah. <laughs> Charming. Uh, All right. Is that enough? That's got to be enough. That's, well, actually, so. <laughs> well, no. Okay. So the main, the main thing, well, one of the goals that we're trying to do here is we're trying to create a concept of putting, putting a garden in a city park in the same way that we have permission to put a soccer field in a circuit city park. And that this template, the information that we gather from this garden will go across Canada and then it will give the idea across Canada to every city that they could also have these projects in it. So we're really hoping to spread the knowledge. One of the other really cool things I like That's about right. this project too is that um, like, there's no way that urban, urban farming will ever get to the point where it can provide a city's every need in terms of food production. Um, but what it can do, I think, is help strengthen the bonds that our cities and our urban areas have with rural farmers across Canada. Um, and that, uh, like, I grew up in a city, I didn't meet a farmer probably until I was, I don't know, in my 20s. I never had any connection to where my food came from, and most people that grow up in cities are in that situation. So if we bring food production into our cities, we're, we're raising kids, like the ones that are helping out here today, to understand where their food comes from, that people actually grow it, and that those people are important, and that we need to support them. Um, and so hopefully the link between our rural and urban um, farmers will strengthen over time, and that that'll actually create more support for more farmers in Canada. Um, so even say young people that live in the city and want to grow food might one day be actually able to go out into our rural areas and become real farmers, big time farmers, one day. <laughs> yeah. 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 When, uh, when we've been teaching, when, when, well this is a story that Heather told us when she was teaching, a lot of the children didn't actually know that food didn't just come from the grocery store. They didn't know there was a step behind. And we actually had one little kid come up and say, Heather said, well, you know, where does milk come from? And they go, well, chocolate milk comes from a brown cow. And they actually thought that was true. No, yeah, that chocolate milk comes from a brown cow or that it just comes from the grocery store. It doesn't have anything to do with the cow, which is pretty sad. So. We're changing that, though. <laughs> yes, Over time. We're changing that. Yeah, that's true. This is, this is the goal. Yeah. Else? So, uh, so most of this is done with volunteers. Uh, well, this so the building of this farm has had an incredible amount of volunteer work. Um, as you can see, there's probably 20 or more people here today, and in the last month of turning this from uh, a park to this farm, we've had over 400 hours donated by volunteers, um, and that some of those are corporate volunteers from concert properties, and some from Canadian. Um, the Great Canadian Landscaping Company who built our fence. Um, and then the rest of those hundreds of hours were from volunteers just from the community, our neighbors. Um, but going forward as the, as the farm grows and starts producing, Gail and Joe are paid farmers, so they'll be doing most of the work. Um, but we'll be working with them throughout the summer and the season to, to identify opportunities for the community to get involved because I think there's obviously a huge appetite for it. People want to get their hands dirty. Um, and we've got tons of other gardens on the North Shore um, that are also producing food for people in our community, so they can also get involved in those. Through Edible Garden Project, yeah. which you might want to explain a little bit about Edible Garden Project, because that's kind of our the whole mother. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the mothership, the Edible Garden Project, uh, has been around on the North Shore for five or six years, and we have about seven gardens. All of those gardens are producing um, food for people in need in our community. So we donate that food through the Harvest Project and through some other organizations um, to people who really need it. And it's the only way they can afford to get um, fresh, local, organic produce. And they're really grateful for it. We also do lots of workshops. So if you're interested in learning how to get a garden started in your backyard, we can definitely help you. Um, and we're also working on some other cool, exciting projects like a new community garden in the city of North Van this year. And that sort of thing. So there's lots of stuff going on. And we've had an amazing amount of um, donations from people. Mm -hmm. We've had, um, I don't know, I mean, pretty much the shed was donated, the soil was donated. All the wood chips, the 
um, the labor to build the fence. The city's brought in tons of leaf mold, which is really great mulch. Um, the all of our tools. For the peas, the tools. Yeah. Pretty much everything we can. Yeah. The greenhouse. <laughs> yeah, the greenhouse was also donated. The hoop house. <laughs>